Hi everybody, Carl here, KE0JWK. Uh, today I'm getting started on uh, recapping uh, my Kenwood TS820S. Um, I got to apologize, I accidentally uh, deleted the first part of this. <laughs> um, uh, showing a location of uh, where they're at in the radio, but we can get that in toward the end when we're putting them back in. Um, the uh, I've gotten started already. Here are the old high voltage caps, and uh, here are the new ones. The, uh, I own a re ordered a replacement kit um, just for ease. I could have sought them out, wouldn't have saved but about a dollar, I don't think, um, and that wouldn't have uh, accounted for my time on searching out the right size. But these are from uh, k4eaa.com. Um, and uh, although they're a lot shorter, they are the same diameter and it allows you to use the original clamps to put them back uh, where they belong in the radio. Um, the, uh, this one here is, uh, well, there you go, you can read it for yourself. I believe the camera's focused there. And this is one of the old ones. Uh, a little bit different, but uh, this is uh, what he uses or has used in the past when he was uh, actively repairing, and I'm confident in all of his stuff. So, sorry about that. Reached over and turned that radio off. So, I've got the disc and the resistor that mounts on top of it uh, ready. Um, just uh, hold the leads together, give them uh, two or three half turns. Um, then solder. This ex one of these excess leads on each side will get cut off. Uh, from there, <clears throat> I've, uh, let me adjust the camera a little bit here for you. Um, let me see if I can get in a little, zoom in a little bit there. Sorry if my audio isn't real great. This camera won't take an external microphone, so I am behind the camera and. Uh, Hopefully uh, the audio will be all right. Uh, come on, focus. Here we go. Okay. Um, so what I've done is I've placed the assembly on the pins. I used a wire wrap tool and just gave it one turn with a wire wrap tool so it's mechanically stays in place um, when I solder it to the lugs on the electrolytic. Um, I'm gonna prepare the other one the same way, put a little solder on them, and then we'll get ready to put them back in the radio. All right, I'm back. Okay, here's where, uh, from the top side, the uh, high voltage capacitors go in the 820. Um, a little tricky to get in and out, going to be a little tricky to get in and out of there, but uh, as you can see, if, uh, if the camera will focus here, I'm kind of off to the side of it now, so I'm stretching my neck to see if it's focusing. I believe it is. Um, I've got uh, the caps all prepped, cut those uh, excess leads off that were on there, and we're ready to go back in with them. I did take note of uh, which direction I needed to put those terminals, the negative terminal, uh, to make the existing wires easier to uh, get back on. I'm going to have to turn the radio a little bit here. I believe you can still see what's going on. And we're going to, we're going to set this, uh, this upper one in place because it looks like it's going to be the more difficult one of the two. I'll try to line the holes up and reach in there and get a screw started. Get on the other side of that. There we go. Okay. Have that one uh, just barely started in. There we go. Uh, let's uh, get the second one on that. Hopefully this won't uh, bore you too much, but you know, I have a hard time finding videos that are detailed enough for me, so I'm going to show you just a little bit of the boring part here anyway. Next. Uh, Getting try to get that second screw hole lined up. Uh, saw it there a minute ago. There it is. And started in. 
hopefully. No. Try that one again. So I'm really sorry, but I had uh, started this video right from the very beginning. The covers were already off the radio, but that was about it. And uh, <clears throat> I accidentally deleted it. So we're going to kind of... There wasn't anything real major on there. Just uh, um, I pointed out before you get started... You definitely need to uh, buy or build a dis capacitor discharge tool and discharge all the high voltage out of this rig or any other uh, hybrid or tube type radio. Um, this this 820's got uh, eight nine hundred volts in there, which certainly can kill you. Um, so you want to make sure you do that. I can. Uh, I can show you my homemade one and there's plenty of information on the internet on uh, how to build one. They're real simple. It's just a uh, big resistor. Uh, alligator clip on one end. Long enough piece of wire to deal with. Um, big resistor. I covered it in uh, heat shrink. I used a piece of solid copper wire. Um, make a hook on the end of it. Let me swing the camera up here to uh, just to give you an example. In the final cage here, you would, uh, and obviously this has all already been done in this radio, just clip the uh, alligator clip to a ground, uh, hang that hook on a high voltage point, and, uh, and just let it sit for a while. And to be extra safe, uh, Take a uh, multimeter that's capable of high voltage after uh, you think you've discharged long enough. and You can actually do the math and figure out, based on the resistor that you've used, uh, how long it will take. But uh, um, I just leave it hang on there for a while and then I test it to make sure. But uh, anyway, so be sure you do that because one of these radials can certainly kill you. Um, so we've got the first, first one in there. Uh, let me make sure, let me spin the radio around make sure I'm putting the second one in the right direction for the leads yep okay I need the negative turned the same direction on this one I didn't remember looking at it from this side so I'm gonna slip it up in there make sure I don't have any wires trapped underneath of it get my other two screws out of my cup it's a handy little tool for reaching in these tight spots and I know some of you are going uh, why not just use a magnetized screwdriver well because usually I prefer to use this it gets a nice grip on them even if you bump them it normally doesn't turn loose. I'm going to have a little problem holding this one in place, it appears. Maybe if I do the bottom screw first, maybe it'll help. Okay, that one started. Let's see if I can get the other one now. And then we'll uh, spin it around and see what we can do on the other side. And uh, this is my first time doing this. Um, so, you know, those of you that have a lot more experience to me than me, which is probably going to be a lot of you, and you have any tips for me, put it in the comments. Um, you know, while you're busy hitting the like and subscribe button. <laughs> um, make sure I don't have no. Okay, just making sure I didn't have any wires trapped there before I snug these all the way down. So we're going to tighten these down. And those clamps that go on the caps, you don't need to get carried away with them. You want them good and firm so they can't slip or vibrate or 
move around, but you don't want to squash your your cap capacitor either. There we go. Okay, so all tight. Um, ready to turn it around now. The uh, adjust the camera a little bit here and uh, get a better angle. So here are the leads I took off. As you can see, they were original from the factory, wire wrapped on there. So I untwisted them and uh, with an unwrapping tool and uh, didn't, didn't straighten this one back out. So when I put them back on, I'm going to give them a little like a, uh, just like I did with the, uh, the resistor and, and disc cap there. Um, I'm going to give them a, maybe a turn around the, uh, the lug. Uh, just for some mechanical uh, uh, help there and uh, before I solder them but uh, so most of this exposed wire here will be getting clipped off after well I'll have to do it beforehand but uh, so I can get my tool up I'll have to take some pliers and straighten it out um, so that I can do it uh, I'm gonna do it off camera um, just because my fat fingers are going to be in the way and you won't be able to see anything anyway but there's where we're at so far hopefully that lighting's a little better um, ready to go and I see I need to take that one back out I, I do I've got the the disc cap trapped in there so um, I'm gonna spin it back around take that back out fix that before I go any farther catch you in a little while <clears throat> all right I'm back I've got all but one of the leads um, soldered onto the uh, the new caps um, but I wanted to show you how I'm doing this not saying this is the way it needs to be done but I like it um, using a wire wrap tool just to get some mechanical connection to the capacitor um, before I solder it so placing the wire wrap tool on the lead going down to the lug that I've got to twist around and I hope you can see this because there's not much room to get me and the camera in there. Um, hopefully it's focused in. So get it over the lug. Uh, it's a little bit tight quarters here. You've got to hold the, uh, the other end so it doesn't spin around. And then just, I'm just giving it about one or two, one, one and a half full turns. Pull the tool off. And if you can see it there, let me see if I can zoom in on it. I might be better off turning this. Okay. So if you, I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, now this black wire is twisted around there, and now I'll make my solder connection. Um, just gives it something to, to hold it uh, nice and tight because it is hard to get the tip of the soldering iron down in that little hole. So just thought I'd show you that. All right, there we have it. The last solder joint's done. Um, the uh, high voltage capacitors have been replaced. And uh, that'll do it for this episode. Hit the uh, like button and subscribe button if uh, you appreciated this uh, video. And uh, we'll see uh, where we're going next. Probably the, uh, uh, the driver uh, capacitors, but uh, um, we'll see. I've got a couple other things I may do first. Uh, thanks for watching. KE0JWK.